Hey there, students. Um, welcome to part one of the Compass Practice Test for Geometry. Uh, in this series, we're going to be going over uh, number one to five, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question number one. It says, in the figure below, line M is parallel to line N. So this line is parallel to this line. Uh, and T is a transversal crossing both M and N. Which of the following uh, lists has three angles that are equal, that are all equal in measure. So this is a scenario where you have a, two parallel lines caused by a transversal. Whenever you have two parallel lines caused by a transversal, um, you have a very special relationship between each pair, uh, between each pair of angles. Either they are uh, congruent, and the two pair of angles you pick, either they're going to be congruent or they're going to be uh, um, supplementary, okay? Either they're congruent or supplementary. Okay, uh, supplementary basically means they add up to, add up to uh, 180. All right, so let's list, I'm going to tell you how does each um, pair of angles relay in uh, how to, the, by name and also by their measure. Okay, so let's take a look at angle A and B. Angle A is congruent to angle B. This angle is congruent to this angle. What's the reason? They have vertical angles. Okay. Remember, vertical angles are always congruent. All right. Uh, now, what else? What other pair uh, can I say something about? Angle A and C. Angle A. Uh, angle A and angle C um, are they are supplementary. Okay. The supplementary angles because that basically means they add up to one eighty. Uh, angle A is congruent to angle D, okay? These two angles are congruent. Well, why are they congruent? Because they're corresponding angles, okay? Known as corresponding angles, all right? So you see our cases here? We have congruency, congruency, and we have supplementary, all right? Now let's take a look at angle, um, angle D and angle E. Angle D and angle E are congruent, I mean, are supplementary. So angle angle uh, D and angle E are supplementary or your linear pair, okay? All right, now let's take a look at how about angle uh, B and angle D. Angle B and, uh, actually angle B is congruent, is congruent to angle D. Why are they congruent? Because they're alternate, alternate interior angles. Okay, alternate interior angles in this scenario are always congruent. All right. Another relationship I want to state is angle C uh, is congruent to angle E. This angle right here is congruent to that angle because they are corresponding angles. Just as angle A and angle D are congruent, angle C and angle E are. Uh, congruent because they are um, corresponding angles. Okay, corresponding angles. All right. Now, um, before I tell you a trick to figure this question out, I'm just going to state one more relationship. Okay, that is the angle between angle uh, C and angle D. What do you think is the relationship between angle C and D? Remember, I told you either they're congruent or supplementary. These two do not look the same, right? This is acute, and this is not acute. Um, so guess what? They are supplementary, all right? So angle uh, C and angle D and angle D are supplementary, all right? Okay, so how do we solve this problem? We haven't asked, answered the question yet. We're just talking a whole, a lot of things about uh, notation, uh, I mean, vocabulary and, and congruency, okay? So just to tell you how they relate. So, um, how do we solve a problem like this? Well, this is a general rule of thumb. If you look at the scenario, we have two parallel lines caused by a transversal. If the angles look the same, guess what? They are congruent 99% of the time, okay? If the angles look the same, they are congruent. If they look different, they're supplementary. Remember, it's always it's going to be one uh, or the other, okay? It has to be either congruent or supplementary. So, if you look at any pair of angles and they look the same, you're con congruent. If they're not, then they must be supplementary. All right. So we're looking for a three pair of angles that are congruent here. 
I know for a certainty that angle A and angle B are congruent because they're vertical angles. And look at them, they look the same. And angle B is also congruent to angle D. They look the same, but they are alternate interior angles. So angle A, B, and D are congruent. Okay? So that tells me that angle option A is the answer. Another pair of congruent angles is angle C. Angle C right here is congruent to angle E. Okay? Those ones are clearly uh, bigger than... Um, So they are, uh, e, C and E are um, obtuse angles, okay? So these are the only obtuse angles. The other ones are all uh, acute angles and they're all congruent, okay? So there goes the correct answer. All right, so there you, go. there you go. The answer to number one is A. All right, let's take a look at question two. It says, as shown in the figure below, triangle ABC is isosceles with length AB equal to the length of AC. So let's um, indicate the measurement there. Isosceles basically means base uh, the two sides are congruent. So this side is congruent to this side. And you're told that the measure of angle A is 40 degrees um, and points B, C, and D are collinear. That means they fall on a straight line. What is the ma measure of angle A, C, D? Okay. So what do we know about um, isosceles triangles? If these two sides are congruent, and guess what? The base angles must also be congruent. Okay, this angle is congruent to this angle right here. Okay? Now, if I can find out the measure of this angle, since it forms a linear pair with ACD, I'll subtract it from 180 to get what that is. Okay, so the first goal is to find out the value of these two base angles. Now, I know the sum of the angles of a triangle is uh, 180 degrees, right? So, if I subtract this angle from 180 and split what's left evenly between these two, I'll get what their measures are, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this one um, angle, angle BAC from 180, and that's going to give me 140. Now what is this? What is 140? This is the sum of these two base angles, okay? But since they're both equal because of the, uh, the isosceles nature of this triangle, we have to split this evenly to allocate your angular measures to each of them, okay? So divided by 2, we have 70 degrees. So what does that mean? Oh, that means that this angle right here is 70, and this angle right here is 70, okay? Now, since angle ACB and ACD form a linear pair, that means that they add up to 180 degrees. So um, measure of angle ACD is simply going to be 180 degrees minus this other angle right here, which is minus 70 degrees. All right, so what is 180 minus 70 is 110 degrees. So the answer to number two is option letter C. Okay? All right, moving right along, question three. <clears throat> it says in the, in the diagram below, the diagram below shows a pasture which is uh, fenced in. All but one section of a fence runs straight north south or east-west. Consecutive fences posts are 10 feet apart except for the one diagonal section. Which of the following statements best describes P, the perimeter of the pasture in P? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add all the north-south or east-west sides. There are a total of 10 of them. Uh, I mean, they all measure 10 feet, I'm sorry. So let's count how many they are, okay? So how many fences do we have? that are either north-south or east-west. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we have 20 of them. So the perimeter of the north-south and east-west is simply going to be 20, times 10, right, since they're 10, since they're 10 feet each. So 20 times 10 is going to be 200, okay? So is that the entire perimeter of the fence around the pasture? Absolutely not. We have this scenario right here, which is a diagonal, okay? So um, if it is a diagonal, what can we say, um, say about it, okay? So um, let's, let's take a look at it. We have a, um, we can make a right triangle of this nature, and 
we, we want to try and figure out what the measure of this diagonal is, okay, or estimate what it is. So let's go ahead and do it. So um, we have, we know that this north south, the this is going to be north south is ten, and this is going to be uh, east to west. We know that is uh, ten also. So this is the diagonal. This is a difficult side right here. So let's call it D. If I can find what the measure of this is, then I can add it here. Okay, but can I set boundaries around it, though? I know that it is longer. This is a hypotenuse, so it must be longer than, <clears throat> than the standard length. So I know that D is greater than 10. So let's write that down. We know that D is greater than 10. If D is greater than 10, and the remaining piece to complete my uh, my diagonal is D, then what does that mean? So I know that I can just add 210 to both sides. So I'm going to D plus 200. I can add 200 to both sides. So I'm going to have D plus 200. 200 is greater than 210. Okay? Or I can switch it around. 210 is less than d plus 200. What is d plus 200? d plus 200 is the parameter, right? Okay, I didn't have to switch it around. I don't have, let, me, let me just look at the way it was. So um, d plus 200 is the parameter, right? So d plus 200 is the parameter p, and p has to be greater than 210, okay? That just tells you that the diagonal has to be greater than one of the sides, all right? So let's take a look at this uh, right here. Uh, anyone that matches with what we have? Absolutely, option letter A. Okay, the perimeter P, which is the diagonal plus 200, has to be greater than 210 because the diagonal is longer than one of the sides, which is 10 units long. Okay, so there you have it. All right, moving along, let's take a look at question number four. It says a rectangle. A rectangular shaped garden with sides of length 16 feet and 19 feet. Um, the garden was changed into a square guard, a square design with the same area as the original rectangle, rectangular shaped garden. How many feet in length are each of the sides of the new square shaped garden? So we're transforming uh, the shape of the garden without altering the area. So we initially had the rectangular garden and we transformed it into a square garden, but with the same area. So let's look at the scenario one first, which is a rectangular garden. It was a 16 by nine feet uh, dimension in dimension, okay? So what is the area here? We know that the area is length times width, right? So this is the uh, width and this is the length. So the area of the rectangular garden is nine times 16 which is 90 plus 54, which is a 444 square feet, okay? So this is 144. Now, we want to create another square garden, but it has to include exactly the same area as this rectangular garden. So what does that tell me? It tells me that the area in here is 144 square feet, okay? But I also know that the area of a, of a, of a square is S square, where S is a measure of a side. So I know this is S, and this is S, okay? So what is S? If I can find out what S is, that's the length of the side of the new square shaped garden, okay? This is a square garden, let's label it. This is a square one, and this is a rectangle, okay? All right, so square, we know that all four sides are congruent, that's why we're using the same letter to represent each side. And like here, we're using different letters, okay? So I know that S square, I know that S square, which is the area, is equal to 144. So how do I get S by itself? I will do the inverse of square, right, to isolate S. What is the inverse of square? Square root. So we root both sides. And then we have S equals 12. So that's the measure of one side of the, of the, of the square garden. So the answer is option letter C. Okay? So there you have it. All right, let's move along to question number five. Um, it says, in the figure below, triangle ABC is a right triangle. The length of AB is six units and the length of CB is three units. What is the length in units of AC? So how long is this side right here? 
All right, so let's label the triangles. So this is a right triangle and this is an SSS scenario. SSS means that we're given two sides and we want to find the last side. We have to use a theorem known as a Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so we're going to use um, A square plus B square equals C square. So you have to be real careful here when you're labeling, okay? The legs, which are the two shorter sides, are A and B. It doesn't matter what you call which. I'm going to call this A and call this B. It can be interchanged, but the C is always the longest side. It's always a hypotenuse, okay? So always call the hypotenuse C, okay? So A and B can be interchanged, which are the legs. The shorter side, the hypotenuse is always C, okay? So I'm going to set up my uh, equation. Uh, I know that A squared plus B squared plus C squared. Now I'm going to substitute, all right? So A squared is 3 squared plus B squared, which is B squared equals C squared, which is 6 squared. All right, if I can get B by itself, that will be the length of AC. All right, so let's go ahead and, and work it out. We have an algebraic equation here. So we'll have 3 squared, which is 9, plus B squared equals 6 squared, which is 36. Okay, now I'm going to subtract uh, 9 from both sides. Subtract 9, subtract 9, and then you're going to have b squared equals, now watch this. This is one common mistake most people make. I don't know why, I, but people make the mistake. They'll say, oh, 36 minus 9 is 25, because this is a square and this is a square, so it's 25. So b squared equals 25, you just root it, and b equals 5. The answer is option letter A. Okay, if you did this, you have just fallen into a trap, a common mistake trap, okay? So please, please, please be careful with your arithmetic. That's absolutely wrong. Well, let me let me bring it back. What I just did right here is absolutely wrong, okay? It's just one visual error that most people tend to make. So to avoid making that mistake, always uh, um, check your arithmetic computations with a calculator, okay? All right, so guess what? 36 minus 9 is actually 27. Okay, so 36 minus 9 is 27. So to get B, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, so B equals the square root of 27. All right, it doesn't match any of these, so that means we need to do some more work. So let's simplify roots 27. So when you take a square root, any uh, factor that repeats comes out as 1, because that's what the root is. Um, so let's break this down into its prime factors. All right, so I take out 3. Uh, 3 goes into 27 9 times, take another 3, 3 goes into 9 3 times. Now you notice that these two repeat. So if I take the square root of 3 times 3, it's just going to be only one of them that comes out, which is uh, 3. Okay, hope that makes sense because square root of 3 times 3 is the square root of 3 square. Square root of square cancelled, and it's 3. Okay, so anytime you have a repetition uh, under the square root of factors being multiplied by each other, they come out as just 1. Okay? All right, so root 27 is basically this 3 comes out. This 3 is by itself, so it remains under the radical. So it's 3 root 3. So your answer is option letter B. Okay, so there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. You can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. Uh, I also appreciate it if you can uh, like this video if you like it or post a comment to tell me what you think. More videos can be found on microserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.